You know, as far as I'm concerned, as a black man, I do not like being talked down to like a child. Like many black men, we do not appreciate being scolded, especially from people who have essentially failed us uh, as far as I'm concerned. This is a call-in. This is a address to President, former President Barack Obama. President Barack Obama decided to scold us black men for not choosing Kamala Harris. And I have to say that Kamala Harris uh, ain't it for us. And I think the fault lays at the feet of people like Barack Obama. What did Barack Obama say? Let's get into it. Let's go over it. Here is what Barack Obama had to say addressing us black men. First off, he goes off and says, well, we haven't seen as much impact, as much enthusiasm really in our communities that he, they have seen prior with the Obama administration. Whose fault is that? Is it the fault of us that there's not as much enthusiasm for a Kamala Harris? What have the Democrats done to accomplish in order to make real tangible changes within the black community for people like myself? You see, if we have it good, then we're gonna keep coming back. But if we don't have it good, well, of course we're gonna to go to greener pastures, pun intended. So, is that the reason? Let's continue and let's hear what Barack has to say further. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to the altar and say that when you have a choice that is this clean, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Kamala Harris doesn't have our same experiences. Now, you could say that Kamala Harris, um, you know, growing up black within the United States, um, Kamala Harris doesn't have the history of Jim Crow within her family. Uh, Kamala Harris' parents were educated when they came here, when they migrated to the United States. They came here with an education. She says she grew up middle class. Part of that middle class upbringing was in Canada. So when it comes to somebody like Kamala Harris, there really isn't a like us in there. On top of it, 
when it comes to knowing our pain and suffering, uh, if that was the case, then why didn't she reflect that in the way she, uh, the policies she pushed while attorney general in California? I don't see it. So if she truly reflects that, then why doesn't she, why doesn't she show it? Barack, I was about to say that you didn't grow up like us either. You traversed the world as a young man. You've been to African countries. You've been to Indonesia. You grew up in Hawaii. How many of us brothers grew up in Hawaii? How many of us have had the same life growing up as you? It just doesn't come out that way. So you can try to scold us about this, but not even you have the same experiences growing up as we do. And you expect us to sit here and, you know, stick with Kamala because of her blackness? Like Dr. Ruha Benjamin said, her blackness and womanness do not in itself make her trustworthy. Just like my blackness and my maleness do not make me in itself trustworthy. You have to be trustworthy in order for us to trust you. We put our trust in you in 2008 and you yourself have failed us. And I'll show you guys why. But I think it's important to note that this goes beyond identity and more into policy and record. But let me let Barack finish. You said to work harder and do more and overcome and achieve the second highest office in the land. When it comes to looking at people like Kamala, is she going to be against the building of cop cities that are being built across the nation? One of the most notable ones being in Atlanta. Is she going to be against that? Is she going to reverse her position on fracking? which also affects our environment. And we experience environmental racism as black people, which is a huge issue for us. Is she also going to push for a $25 an hour minimum wage? Because for a lot of us black men, the economy is one of the biggest issues. Is she going to be pushing for reparations for American uh, black Americans and American descendants of slave freedmen. Is she going to be doing that? Because I don't see that on her platform as well. When it comes to the wars, uh, disproportionately, who's recru recruiting our young men and women in school? You know, I mean, the military is constantly in our schools in the hood, trying to recruit our young people to go out and become cannon fodder for the military industrial complex. So I ask you, Mr. Obama, how would she be better for us on a tangible level? Because I agree, when it comes to identity, I would love to see a black woman. But the question is, is that black woman going to also push for policies that are actually going to be beneficial for all of us. Her devotion to Israel is greater 
in her devotion to black people. Her devotion to Israel is greater than her devotion to Americans. I think that's something to be said. Now, one thing that I will definitely show is this. Because this is why we do not trust her. Because you destroyed any chances that we would have to trust a Kamala Harris. How black wealth, how Obama destroyed black wealth. Since the Obama presidency was a disaster for the middle class wealth in the United States, between 2007 and 2016, the average wealth of the bottom 99% dropped by $4,500. Over the same period, the average wealth of the top 1% rose by $4.9 million. Just as to let you know, when it comes to somebody like Barack Obama, who did he have in his cabinet? Well, wasn't a lot of Wall Street types in his cabinet that he put in initially back in 2008? You had the Paul Volkers and the Tim Geithners, right? So when it comes to somebody like Barack Obama, truth be told, he also had no intentions of really sticking with us, even from the outset, sticking with us black men. It continues, says this drop hit the housing wealth of African Americans particularly hard. Outside of home equity, black wealth recovered its 2007 level by 2016, but average black home equity was still $16,700 lower. Much of this decline, we will argue, can be laid at the feet of President Obama. His housing policies led directly to millions of families losing their homes. What's more, Obama had the power, money, legislative tools, and legal leverage to sharply ameliorate the foreclosure crisis. He chose not to use it. And this is one of the biggest reasons why we do not trust anybody who says, I look like you, so therefore I must be for you. All skin folk ain't kin folk. And with that being said, do you think that just because Kamala Harris is a black woman that we're gonna trust her just because she's skin folk? Just because she has, uh, you know, the gender of our mamas and our sisters and our aunties and our grandmas? Absolutely not. The focus is on policy. It is not on the gender or the race of the person, though that does have a secondary or tertiary factor, it is not the main thing. Just to let you know, we vote with our wallets. We look into our bank accounts and see how well we're doing. And that is one of the primary reasons as to how we vote. So, Mr. Obama, you can scold us all you want, gold away, but it still doesn't chase, doesn't change the fact that many of us who are in the situations that we're in right now is due to the portrayal by yourself, the portrayal by a Kamala Harris. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be going towards Donald Trump. Many of us do not like Kamala Harris because she is very, very similar to Donald Trump. This is why 
we're more focused on going to greener pastures. I encourage everybody to do the same because when it comes to policy, we want someone that's really going to fight for us. And from what I can see, just like you, Kamala Harris, ain't it? 